All right. Welcome back to Extra AI, your podcast series on machine learning and AI applications. As you all know, this is the premier destination for all things related to AI. You have been listening into some interesting conversations across different domains. So today I have invited one guest from SAP and we are going to talk about uh, digital assistants and conversational AI in the SAP ecosystem or in the SAP universe. I'm thrilled to have you all join us in this exciting journey into the world of AI, the voice recognition and natural language processing and of course we'll also be talking about how SAP is uh, building these uh, technologies or enhancing the technologies with these uh, uh, conversational AI. As you all know in different episodes we have been talking about different cutting edge technologies but today the focus is going to be on digital assistant digital assistants and conversational ai whether you are an ai enthusiast an sap professional or simply curious about the transformative power of conversational ai today's episode from extra ai podcast will be your uh, go to source for in depth discussion or in-depth conversation about how things are happening um, at a high level uh, in the SAP ecosystem from digital assistants and conversational AI. There is also this uh, SAP Sapphire global or a yearly event happening in the third week of May as always. So you can uh, get much more detailed information when you attend Sapphire event in person in Florida in Orlando Florida or there are some virtual sessions as well as always you'll find more information at the end of the podcast so sit back relax and enjoy the conversation Uh, welcome back to our podcast series extra ai uh, on machine learning and ai applications uh, this is your host ragu banda uh, the podcast as as you know is designed to provide interesting insights to enterprise small medium and large in ai and business community on how ai can be leveraged across different domains and industries today i have the honor of inviting a guest from sap kasten ing uh, so kasten uh, welcome on board could you provide a brief uh, background from your end and uh, welcome on board thank you ragu a little bit background from my history i've been long years software developer and um, started developing web applications then joined sap worked as a solution architect and in parallel um get a product which was built on um, already on ai on conversational ai and then changed my role into the product management of the ai unit and now i'm heading currently the product management for the digital assistant and um the stuff all around here and you can say it's more or less um the successor of conversational ai and copilot Awesome uh, thank you Kasten for that amazing introduction uh, and like you mentioned i think uh, we'll the today's big topic is around the one sap digital assistant which is uh, a great introduction that you have provided so before getting into the regular conversation that we do i start the conversations with a teaser question uh, so that our audience can ease into the conversation uh, so can you provide an example a personal or a professional example about that influenced how ai is being used today compared to the past uh, so some kind of a, an example a personal or a professional example that you could relate to i think i can pick up here a little bit um, or my my famous example is something um, you you're driving in the car and your infotainment system is already or it's already some years ago where it started 
um, having the control of your infotainment system over voice. And it's like when you were talking to a chatbot, you could talk to your infotainment system. And this was the first experience here and um, also the impression that everything what we should do should at least fall under to this benchmark. But if we now look outside and it's somehow uh, this famous GPT mm -hmm. um, stuff, which you cannot get around, or I, I would say it sometimes, unfortunately, I come to this point later, but at the end, um, this experience changed a little bit um, our view on the, onto AI. On the other hand, um, people are thinking everything can be solved by um, the open AI stuff and you don't need anything else from AI any longer. But that's not true. But this will be discuss a little bit later. But the experience is now when I started software development, then Google was coming up somehow mm -hmm. at the horizon and you implemented the search engine and everybody said if the search engine has to have the google like search experience you were measured against this user experience of google mm -hmm. and nowadays i think everybody is telling you um, this experience it's you're measured against chat gpt the experience i want to have with your system and the interaction with your assistant and all the stuff with AI has to follow this user experience of ChatGPT. It's completely coming out of the box, giving you a fluent way into, you don't have to know anything about AI, but it's working. And that's what people are expecting today. And I think this also influences a lot of our work today. Yes, I agree to you, uh, Karsten. I think in the past, like we were compared more when we talk about search experiences around Google. And now, obviously, this uh, kind of a influence around ChatGPT about uh, these language models will, uh, will happen eventually, I think. And we will be uh, compared against or uh, will happen eventually. And we will see how things will evolve. Uh, but like you mentioned, I think we are just about getting there. Any, any, um, before we get into our real thought, our real discussion today's uh, uh, podcast, any, any additional thoughts about upcoming AI advancements in the current world that you want to briefly touch base on? I think not in in detail um, now because um, yes. Everybody is talking of um, OpenAI, ChatGPT, and everything else is uh, going to the background. I don't want to put anything in front be before because we are going more into detail of the digital assistant later on, which is then coming also to the point that you need other stuff. Here, um, what I want to tell or um, highlight is that not always everything is directly at hand that it can be taken out of the memory of some um, artificial intelligence because you have a lot of stuff which is rapidly changing this is the data in your back end system mm -hmm. and this you have to be able to query online and really merge into um, your flows with um, AI, it has to be designed together. This is something where we currently are not at the point that you can say, okay, I train it directly into um, any um, artificial intelligence model or something like this, because you don't have it as fast as you need it at the end. And you have to find smart ways how you can interact with this. Yeah, that's a great point that you have brought, uh, Karsten. Uh, let us, I uh, think, uh, take a quick break and then come back, uh, get into our real uh, meetup for today's conversation. All right, uh, welcome back. So now let us get into the today's topic of the one SAP digital assistant. So before getting there, uh, Karsten, uh, I would like to first start with this, right? Like. Uh, I have the question about how do you see AI transforming enterprises and consumer businesses? Maybe any big picture overview. 
I think um, we we are as as usual and as always we are starting from the consumer side because consumer, the consumer business is changing and it's changing due to the availability of something. Um, enterprises are then following in as you had it in the past when when you um, had some or looking at. Also, from my experiences, um, I implemented a lot of online shops in in my during my uh, professional work time. And when you had B two B shops, they were really not fancy, not really um, have uh, had a good user experience, and the flow was not really continuous, um, really following some some paradigm. And then you had coming up in the consumer side, um, online shops, and they were really amazing. They were fancy, they were good looking. They had um, uh, a real good flow, interaction flow for the end user, for the, the consumer, because you want to sell something. In the B2B area, you had always the impression it's an honor that somebody goes and buy some stuff from our side and so on and this was also changing the view on um, the b2b side and it's also the same coming now with ai we have yeah. as we had it um, before we have this uh, gpt3 model and gpt3 is always already outdated i want to say we have all currently the number four not the three any longer and this uh, transforms into the end consumer space because people are let uh, gpt write them some speech they want to have on on a celebration party or um Yes, pupils at school um, take the opportunity not to do their homework. And um, I would say I'm from Germany and I would uh, always have liked it during my time at school. If somebody <laughs> writes my essays and um, the AI is the perfect companion here. And all this stuff is coming and now pushing into the regular space. And then you're coming here in the, in the enterprise and then people are recognizing, ooh, okay, maybe we can take some, um, I would say, brochures and presentations and go to market material, which has to be somehow a little bit more elaborated and um, have a, a better um, language than usually the technical uh, people could write but the content should be technical feasible so and so you let the ai here help you provide some some content and this ai will be i would say more more fluently embedded into the daily life what we have to check and to take care of and this is not only um, but we only have the influence here at sap we have to check that this is valid, what we are um, right. uh, producing with the help of the AI. That means that we have at least internally, if we don't have a double check by the end user, then we have to ha check that everything is correct, right, mm -hmm. and follows also some guidelines and uh, some ethics policy we have here in place. And on the other hand side, if we get, can give the end user a chance to double check where the uh, content is coming from, that he has the possibility to verify what we are producing with the help of the AI. Right. That's a great point that you brought. I think uh, when we compare it with the consumer software businesses, and that is more... Uh, uh, easier to integrate or more easier to uh, attain. But when we talk about the enterprises, I think this is where we also have to think about our, not only the customer, but also the customer's customers. So this is where I think we have this additional layer of complexity. And like you rightfully mentioned, when AI comes into the play, obviously there is uh, uh, this aspect of how do I 
enhance the business process by using this additional AI capabilities and this additional tools that you have. Any any thoughts or any uh, any current AI innovations that might be interesting for you? Uh, I know you talked a bit about the chat GPT and how it can enhance the businesses, uh, but uh, around that aspect, do you want to speak a few words around that? I think the, the innovation is here really um, done on uh, or what is the strength of this technology. The, the strength of this technology is the language understanding and the formulating, that means the language uh, pro processing and production. That means you get a good um, elaborate formulation out of um, the machine. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the strength fee. And what you can also leverage, because if you look at software, um, it can give you a boost on productivity in software development. Because development, you usually take um, development languages and they are really structured, more structured than um, our daily language. And this can be easily um, made up with such technologies that you can produce code snippets, longer code um, uh, um, procedures and so on, which you can then uh, plug into your software. And the fanciness at this point is again, that you um, can double check with testing and and so on, and with your functional um, book you have on the other side and the requirements, then you can um, verify that the output is valid here. And I think this can really give you the production boost. Beautiful. Yes, I completely agree with that. I think uh, uh, providing the required or needed production boost will definitely help. I think and this is one of those innovations which will take us a long way. I think whether it is the technology community or whether it is the enterprise community, yes, I think this will definitely improve the way we uh, work with technology. Let us, I want to, um, yeah, we've done some kind of, uh, we talked about some of the thoughts around AI innovations and how technology is helping us out. I want to now take one step back and go into the actual business problem, right? Like what are the typical challenges faced by the customers or consumers here using uh, now we are getting into the conversational AI aspects, right? Like when, what are the typical challenges challenges that are being faced? And what about the SAP's uh, chatbot platform, the SAP conversational AI? Any thoughts around this? Um, I would say the challenge for customers or what you have in your daily life is the complexity um, uh, is rising. Complexity of all the processes is ex more or less exploding. Um, you have, for sure, you have more data at hand, but uh, the question is how you can then leverage all the stuff you get presented there. And it's, you want to have a simpler access to uh, the relevant um, processes and data. You want to have maybe also some support in decision making. And um, for sure, you want to automate some routine tasks and get around this. This is something where we um, have or what the customers are struggling with. Mm -hmm. And also, if I look at SAP software, SAP software itself, it's really complex. It, can, it allows you a lot of things to do, but right. at the end, um, you, ha you have to have the knowledge how you can do it, um, or how you can use the software itself. That means the barrier is really high, and if you're only an occasional user, it's sometimes really difficult to get... Um, 
the way into. And if you don't remember um, how you used it last time, it's always difficult to find then the documentation and so on and so on. And also inside an SAP system, where do I find my um, uh, application where I, I can file in a certain request if it's a purchase order or something like this. Right. This is something customers are facing um, issues here. On our side, for, for sure, SAP want to um, support the customers with these issues. That's one thing. And on the other side, if we manage to get this um, up and running, then we um, for sure increase our um, uh, the way we can or the perception of the SAP software against our competition because it's more easy to use mm -hmm. and it's um, slighter. Um, you can have also only occasional users and you don't have only professionals and so on and. For sure, what we also have to take into account is at the end, it uh, really sounds good, but at the end we have to um, come to a point where we don't have an individual software for each customer which solves this issue because right. we have to support with standard software, the customer, mm -hmm. and have to make it as easy as possible that he gets into this standard software and not gets um, completely tailored software, which is then at the end from our side, from a maintenance point of view, ridiculous because it's too expensive. True. And um, with this, we have to support everything here around and make it much more easy that the customers can use our software. Beautiful. That's at the end the point what we have to reach here. And um, the idea I know exists since long time. SAP always did some steps into this direction, mm -hmm. but with um, I would say the real companion, it's easier. And that means if you have an assistant at your side which guides you to, through the system, this is much more easy to reach than we had in the past. Yes, okay, we have some more. Uh, uh, easier to use user interfaces. This was when we are breaking up from the um, regular subclient to some Fury applications and so on. This was all the first way forward. But um, if I look at the Fury applications, they are still require some knowledge um, how to use. Not everyone is really, really easy to take. True. Right, I think I uh, agree uh, to that. Uh, what about uh, the SAP's chatbot platform, right? Like the SAP Conversational AI. Any f words about that? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, this this I already a little bit started to bring it in. We are in, in the at the point to have a break uh, into our software um, offering here. Conversational AI was a standalone chatbot platform. You could take it and do everything you liked, but you also had to do everything on your own as a customer. What we are, or we have somehow missed that there was um, a real tight integration with our business software. Mm -hmm. um, so we were always in a competition with other um, chatbot vendors because it was really um, a similar offering. Um, but now we are changing the paradigm and mm -hmm. this also changed a little bit slightly in technology. Um, our new offering, the digital assistant with the real SAP digital assistant, what we are building is coming to the customer and feels like as reintegrated and coming out of one um, software, even if it's not or from a technical point of view, it, it's still um, running side by side, but it should feel for the customer and this should give him the impression that it comes directly as one offering. Beautiful. Any additional thoughts? I know you briefly spoke about the 
capabilities, the integration capabilities into the uh, processes. Any additional thoughts you would like to share about the integration capabilities of these conversational AI apps with better UX? Yes, and we, we have here. Yeah. Yeah, we have here several um, dimensions for the integration and um, just want to start. First of all, we uh, will deliver um, the digital assistant, which is coming from our AI unit as a platform. Um, and we will ship it or it will be shipped from the LOBs together with default interaction flows, the so-called um, business capabilities. This will be predefined, and so the customer has something he can start directly out of the box with. Um, he has not to build up every integration and every um, interaction on his own. He gets a, a predefined set he is already able to use. This is one thing. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand side, yes, for sure, the integration what we are working on, but this will also take a little bit more of time, that we um, get more deeply integrated into the user interface. That means what we had in the past, or we started with Copilot and Fury, we want to get back again. Mm -hmm. That means that we know what um, inside our digital assistant which can be a chat window and on the side, and you can move it all around over the screen. Um, but it knows what's going on on the screen, on the rest of the screen. This will, for sure, we will be able to have this in Fury, but we also have some other smart integration ideas um, we are striving for. For instance, we will also be present on SAP Start, this is a new central entry point, which will be launched um, during the year. And here we will seamlessly integrate into the search bar. That means the customer has the search bar and can um, enter whatever he likes. It can mm -hmm. then result in a search or something else, or maybe some business capability, which is then triggered by the, from the digital assistant. And they will cl clearly see, okay, this content is now coming from a digital assistant and then you can start interaction. And um, we will have several layers because for some tasks, maybe you don't need the full chat window. You can directly pop off, jump over to something else, or you mm -hmm. can then have the longer chat window um, where we, you interact with your assist. This is one thing. Yeah. Um, this can also be steered for sure um, if voice capability is there. This will also come later on, I think. And the good thing about the one digital assistant, and this is the reason why we speak about one, is regardless the user interface you're on, if you start a, your beginning with substart and then you're changing into success factors mm -hmm. your chat history is still kept and then you can you can ask on um, the, the sap start for something out of success factors and if you don't have um, anything you have to leave the chat that means uh, it's a short answer you you get here then you directly get this answer without leaving SAP start, but it's coming out of your success factors system and vice versa. And this will then span over all the systems where we are present. And this is the idea that you have one companion which is at your side during the whole interaction. And for sure, what we also have to avoid is to rebuild every user interface uh, again, in inside um, a business capability, this is nonsense. If you have already a smart user interface mm -hmm. on maybe some uh, for S4, some uh, Fury screen, which is really um, good, usable, and so on, and you're only looking for it, you want to know where it is, then the digital assistant will guide and navigate you to this Fury um, application and then you can enter everything you need there 
you can look up everything there and then return to your um, other flow you just started there. That's the idea, having an assistant at the site. Beautiful. So that is very comprehensive, the way you have explained about uh, the uh, the buzz around uh, uh, the SAP Digital Assistant and the explanation about the one SAP Digital Assistant. All right, uh, welcome back. So we've been having some amazing conversation with uh, Mr. Karsten. We did talk about the AI innovations. We did talk about the introduction about the uh, what are the business problems that are there and how the challenges can be addressed. And we talked about the introduction of SAP Digital Assistant, the buzz around the one SAP Digital Assistant. Now I want to uh, go into this question a bit more deeper, uh, Karsten. Does SAP Digital Assistant come with any predefined best practices content? You want to uh, provide some few thoughts around that? Yes, it, it will come with predefined content. We have um, here uh, what we can predefine is for sure navigational, uh, so-called navigational content, which means um, I am looking for some application where I, I can enter or look up something. Um, which is not possible to bring it into the small chat window or does not make any sense here. And this should be solved by these navigational cases. Then we have the so-called transactional cases, which are more interesting because here you have the direct um, connectivity into the backend system. And here um, our LOBs will provide the content. And this is the reason why the digital assistant is coming with the LOB software and not is distributed as an individual product from our side. Um, we are only holding things together, explaining how this one digital assistant is working, but mm -hmm. the LOBs itself will provide content. This will come from also from success factors. They will provide during the year um, content and by the way, they already had started uh, building content on conversational AI, but this will be ported to the digital assistant. And they will bring additional stuff, which um, I cannot now disclose because it's coming um, on right. Safari and they asked not to um, really let um, everything flow out before, um, but it's um, easing up uh, the interaction with the system and giving you, I would say, um, an, a short and a quicker access to um, a lot of screens inside success factors, which are not necessarily needed in detail to start having this um, interaction and the, the stuff created in success factors. What we also will have is um, navigational content from S4 and um, to example assistance or capabilities there, at, at least two, maybe three, if we can manage, which mm -hmm. will be released in end of quarter three for um, the customers. It's the operational purchaser, this was already released in the past on conversational AI, which uh, allows you to have some interactions for the purchaser, which gives you some stuff in um, the assistant and we will have the cost center um, assistant and maybe some logistics. Okay, beautiful. So uh, let us quickly get into any lighthouse use cases uh, around the SAP Digital Assistant. Any thoughts or any um, highlights that you could provide about the lighthouse use cases? The, the fun fact will be for our customers that they um, get, or the Sapphire showcase will also be available for success factors in the digital assistant and um, we will have this S4 content on SAP start end of the quarter three with um, some customers already there. And then in um, November, we will have a full-fledged first version of, I would I tell it the first version because you can always 
enhance it and bring more capabilities of success factors in November. And this will also then be released to customers. Beautiful. So now comes to the most important question of the podcast, right? Like uh, we keep talking about what are the different business problems that we had. And we talked about the different AI innovations and how conversational AI applications evolved. And we also talked about how SAP Digital Assistant, the buzz around it and the Lighthouse use cases. Now the million dollar question is that, how is this different from the other conversational AI or other digital assistant out there in the market? Uh, I know this is coming from SAP, but any thoughts on how we can differentiate? This is, as um, I, I started to strive it a little bit, and this is the reason why we changed all the strategy from conversational AI, is we are changing here the focus and um, also the strategy towards something which is deeply integrated with our software. If I go out to the market and take an arbitrary chatbot framework, I have to do all, or I cannot directly start at the same point as we are starting here. We are giving things which are integrated on the data interaction basis with the SAP systems. We have something which is then already from a um, an, um, single signs on uh, perspective integrated into our user interfaces. We deliver a client which is perfectly tailored to our user interfaces. This is something which coming or and on top, we already have predefined uh, capabilities to interact with our SAP systems. Mm -hmm. For sure, we have to focus on our SAP universe, but um, as you all will also know, we have a lot of SAP business applications. And if, we, uh, if customers have more or already have one system and more of our systems, then it's a real perfect companion for you. If you want to rebuild this with some, I would say, standalone technology chatbot framework, you have projects which uh, are lasting for years mm -hmm. and you don't get it out of the box. You don't get it with maintenance and all this stuff. And um, it's not seamlessly integrated and at the end, if SAP changes something, then um, you have also to uh, follow up with this as a customer on your own. From SAP, you get it out of the box, directly integrated with maintenance and all the stuff. And this is something where at the end, there is no competition on the market to this. Right. Beautiful. I think I like the aspect that you brought, the real one SAP digital assistant, which is really integrated into the products uh, and the business processes so that it helps the end users and the customers as a real uh, digital assistant in their regular uh, business processes. Beautiful. That was a great, uh, mm, uh, that was that, that was a great way that you've put uh, Karsten. So I know we have, uh, it's a very interesting topic. Uh, obviously, now with the uh, innovations around uh, the conversational AI applications or the conversational AI bots going on out there with ChatGPT and maybe a few more things will come from, uh, I think we, we also see BARD AI coming in from Google and a few other, uh, like Meta and a few other things will come around. I think it's a very interesting field. I know it can take... Uh, uh, but I try to put these podcast conversations within the one hour limit, uh, 35 to 45 minutes. Uh, so thanks for your uh, time today, um, Karsten, in sharing your wisdom with us. Any key takeaways or closing remarks that you would like to provide or any references uh, so that the audience can go ahead and find some information or other things? First of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to discuss on this topic. It's really interesting. And um, I have to confess, the topic was already um, highly interesting and innovative when we don't have uh, this um, 
chat gpt hype before but now um it's got a, a real high speed at the end which is hopefully also driving us forward um, and giving us the perception inside the company that we can move uh, really quickly here i can for um, all who are interested i can um really um, give you the advice to take a look into our Voxon page. There are a lot of links and um, hints all around. You find there tutorials if you want to start to only have a tryout to, to build um, a, part, a capability of digital assistant on yourself. You can start building capabilities there and also get in contact with us if you have some um, real use case you want to build with us together into the one digital assistant. Um, yes, the rest is more or less self-explaining on the Workzone page. Thank you, Kasten. All right, let us now wrap up the podcast number 49, another insightful episode of the Extra AI podcast. I first want to extend a heartfelt thank you to our special guest, Mr. Karsten Ng, for sharing his valuable insights, experiences, and expertise with us. It's been an absolute pleasure having Mr. Karsten on the show, and we truly appreciate the time and effort he has taken to enlighten our listeners on the fascinating world of digital assistance and conversational AI within the SAP ecosystem. We hope to have him back in the show sometime in future and we could continue exploring and discussing the advancements and trends in this ever evolving field of conversational AI. So before we say goodbye, don't forget to subscribe to our Extra AI podcast on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode we also encourage you to follow us on social media and visit our website for the latest news views and articles uh, our social media platforms you can reach out uh, myself Raghu Banda the host on my LinkedIn handle Raghu Banda or on my Twitter handle RK Banda if you have any further questions, you can also directly reach out to my guest, Mr. Karsten Ng, since I'll be tagging him on the LinkedIn message, on the LinkedIn post. Alternatively, you could also reach out on our website, extraai.com, X-T-R-A-W-A-I.com, to find more information. And there is a wealth of uh, information out there. You have a lot of blogs and articles and uh, podcasts out there from different uh, seasons and different guests that we have. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, feel free to reach out to us, reach out to me uh, via the social media handles or via the website. Once again, uh, I, Raghu Banda, your host, uh, thank you all for staying with us, tuning regularly and listening into all these podcasts and providing interesting feedback. Until next time, keep exploring, innovating and embracing the power of AI in whatever uh, things that you are listening into or uh, uh, accessing the information. I would say stay curious and stay tuned for our next episode. Until then, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're tuned in from or dialed in from. Happy predicting the future with AI technologies. Thank you and bye-bye now.